Well, thank you. I, I really hope that you've enjoyed this session. And I think one of the things that we tried to do in this session is to bring up controversial issues. And this is another one of those issues that really goes to the root of what we do. And we all think we do the best anastomosis, but no one really knows if we really do the best anastomosis. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, I have no disclosures. So these are the, certainly the ones on the left, the first two on the left are the most common, uh, commonly performed anastomotic configurations in patients, for example, who undergo iliclonic anastomosis, the end-to-end -end and end-to-side anastomosis. I'll talk a little bit about the cono anastomosis shortly, but although some people actually use end-to-side, side-to-end, et cetera, I'm really gonna concentrate just on the end-to-end -end and side-to-side -side configurations because those are the ones that are most commonly done. So who really cares about this? Well, we, really, we care about it. We care about it because we want to make sure that the patients tolerate the anastomosis well and go home. Those are obviously the short-term risks, but the gastroenterologists in particular are more interested about the long-term risks, and what they're always worried about is recurrence. And as you know, the recurrence is, has to do, it's almost always at the anastomosis in Crohn's disease and almost always on the proximal side of the anastomosis. And, People have tried to figure out why is that? What is so unique about this anastomosis? I mean, you do an iliclonic anastomosis for cecal cancer, you don't get recurrence. But what is so unique about Crohn's disease? And people have tried to think about this, and I actually want to spend a couple minutes trying to figure this out with you. So these are some of the mechanisms that have been proposed to try to figure out why these anastomoses recur. Well, one of them, logically, is that, well, maybe there's residual disease at the resection margin. That sounds fairly straightforward. And, uh, but yet recurrence still occurs with a normal histologic margin, and we still get disease recurrence. So probably that plays maybe a role, but maybe not the fundamental role. Suture line ischemia. Well, okay, there is suture line ischemia at the, at the anastomotic line, but if you think about the anastomosis, the same amount of ischemia occurs in the proximal side and the distal side, so that probably shouldn't make a difference. Maybe it has to do something with the mesoteric lymph nodes or the adipocytes, for example, which are on the lymph nodes. That possibly is an explanation. And in fact, some have talked about it, and we're thinking of embarking potentially on a study looking at uh, trying to re uh, remove more of that mesentery, essentially a cancer operation, if you like, or an extended mesenteric resection, not for cancer, but in patients with IBD, patients with Crohn's disease, to potentially remove this, these potential uh, uh, pathogens or, or whatever is causing this. We don't know the answer to that. And the most common one that we think of is potentially has to do with reflux of colonic contents that's in the small bowel. Now, that's interesting, but you can still get recurrence after a small bowel to small bowel anastomosis. So obviously that doesn't play a role. So what is the evidence for some of this? And this is actually an old study that I thought was very interesting. I've, I've actually never looked at the study in detail, but I did for this talk. And it was done by Jan, John Cameron of pancreatic uh, of fame. And what he did is when he was very young, he did an RCT comparing an end to end to side to end, side to end iliclonic anastomosis. And what he did is, if you look in particular, let me see if I can show you in the, is there a pointer here? Let's see, pointer, right. What he did is he left a little bit of a cuff here. See this, blind end. And he purposely did this. So what he did is he looked at the patients, he operated on them, they went home. This is, by the way, in the days before prophylaxis. So these were very uh, naked patients, so to speak. There was no influence of prophylaxis on these patients. And what he found that there was no recurrence between whether or not the patient had an end-to-end -end or side-to-end anastomosis. But interestingly, there was no, recur no recurrence within, oh, sorry, uh, go back. Sorry about that. There was no recurrence within this little blind limb, none. So what he suggested is that, well, maybe reflux and stasis of colon contents involve recurrence because it just involves the anastomotic site itself, right here, and not this part. And obviously, this would imply, obviously, again, that suture line ischemia was less important because there was, again, suture line ischemia everywhere, including that very small little blind limb. So this gives us some insight, potentially. It has to do something with some reflux, again, in a colonic anastomosis, with colonic contents into the bowel, so what is, into the small bowel. So what does this mean for which anastomosis is better? Well, you can argue that a side-to-side -side anastomosis might be better in this context. It might be better because there's increased space between the true colonic and ileal lumens, which may reduce colonic spillage in, into the ileum. There's a wider luminal di diameter, which may reduce stasis of bacteria, may be argued about better blood flow if you believe this concept of ischemia playing a role, although, again, there's evidence to suggest it may not. Staples might, and I put the word might there, might have lower immunogenicity than sutures because they're non-reactive. 
And a longer anastomotic length may improve symptom control even, with, with, even if there is disease recurrence. So all of those things might be some potential advantages of the side-to-side -side anastomosis. Now, what's the data? Well, the most cited paper and, the, and really one, basically one of the only well-designed randomized controlled trials, although there, there were some issues regarding this trial, was the CAS trial. It was done in the U.S. and Canada. And those patients were under, underwent ileoclonic anastomosis and then looked at endoscopic, shown on the left, and symptomatic recurrence on the, on the right. And you can see there was no difference whether or not the patients had end-to-end -end or side-to-side -side anastomosis. There were clearly differences, by the way, in the study regarding operative time and some surgical morbidity. But these, it, certainly in terms of disease recurrence, which is what we're referring to now, right now, there was no difference. Now, this study has been criticized. And one of the big criticisms of this study is that postoperative prophylaxis was not controlled. And that was one of the problems with the study. And even the authors agreed with that. So we don't really know based on this study, if this is a true uh, 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 measure of effect or some difference, or there's really no difference between the end-to-end -end and side-to-side, -side, because again, that, that covariate, uh, that variable was not uh, um, controlled for. The only other well-designed study was the Japanese study, where they looked at end-to-end -end EE versus side-to-side -side SS, and looked at the uh, recurrence rate, uh, and you can see in this that the end-to-end -end had a much higher reoperation rate for recurrence than patients with side to side. Now, these weren't just ileoclonic anastomoses, it's been criticized, fairly low patient numbers. But again, this gives you some sense, at least objectively, that, and this is a randomized trial, that there is some advantage to using a side to side in terms of recurrence versus an end to end anastomosis. So, both of these, the one study showed no difference. This study suggested there might be, in fact, an advantage to a side to side. Well, what do we do when we kind of have the despairing studies and small studies, et cetera? We go to a meta analysis. And this is a meta-analysis that was done. And you can see here, let me just show you, let me just bring you through this data. You can see that this is the incidence of recurrence, okay? And there's RCT, RCT that they looked at. And you can see that in this least particular uh, meta-analysis, that the data favor the side to side. The side to side is the, is the one to the left, okay? And then they also looked at reoperation rates as well, and that also favored side to side anastomosis. So these meta-analyses combined with the data that I showed you before implies, suggests that the side to side anastomosis is better than the end to end anastomosis. Now what about the new player on the block? This is the Kono S anastomosis. And for those of you who don't know how this is done, it's mainly been uh, advocated by the Japanese. And what you do is you identify the disease segment and you make two transverse uh, segments, uh, linear cuts, you leave the mesentery in place, Okay. Then what you do is you combine these two ends. And what this does is it makes what's what they call a supporting column behind the anastomosis itself. And then they make an anastomosis in front of it. And the concept of this supporting column is that even though there's disease that may recur at the anastomosis, that supporting column allows, or rather does not allow, the bowel ends to become stenotic and may in fact improve functional, you know, the, in, the incidence of uh, recurrent the symptomatic uh, recurrence. This is just what it looks like in vivo, at least with pictures. You can see you're dividing the bowel close to the mesentery, you're then dividing it trans, uh, uh, in this direction, putting it back together again. Sorry. And then you're making, this is your supporting column behind here, side to side anastomosis in front with the supporting column behind. And this is what it looks like when it's all completed, anastomosis with the supporting column here. And this is again a schematic of what it looks like. Now, what exact, exactly is the adva purported advantage of this? Is there any data on this? Well, there is some. Again, it's Japanese data. And you can see that when you look at endoscopic scores shown in the graph on the left, there seems to be basically the same or somewhat of improvement for the, for the S group, the, the Kono S. But more importantly, if you look on the right, that's the uh, pa percent of patients remaining free of surgical recurrence. You can see there's a significant advantage for patients who underwent the Kono S in, in red versus the patients who went the conventional anastomosis uh, shown in group C. So these data suggest that the Kono S is very good. If you actually look at the incidence of recurrence, it's almost zero. So based on these data, you can imply that the lowest risk of recurrence, at least in current, currently published data, is the Kono S anastomosis. Now, some of this data, again, as in most, actually all of this data has been in Japanese um, data, Japanese uh, uh, literature. There actually are two randomized trials going on in the U.S. about this to specifically look at the value of the Kono S and anastomosis and certainly in terms of uh, uh, disease recurrence. So in summary, based on what we know so far 
compared to the end in anastomosis, the side-to-side -side anastomosis is associated with a lower long-term disease recurrence, and the value of the Kono-S anastomosis awaits prospective evaluation. Thank you.